Today we're going to poach a chicken in wine and aromatic vegetables. Okay, I'm going to get started. expertly and rapidly done, but I think you read the wrong recipe. We need a whole chicken. No problem. Here you are. Just what I wanted, Jack. Now let's begin. Now we're going to do a very nice recipe, a whole chicken poached in white wine and aromatic vegetables like leeks and carrots. And we're going to serve it whole on a bed of rice with the vegetables around it. Let's start. There's our chicken. Okay. So I have all the vegetables. We have leek, of course, celery, carrot. I have already have one leek cut. I'm going to peel that carrot. What are you going to and put in the chicken? I'm going to make an herb bouquet. There is some thyme and a few peppercorns. And I'm going to tie them all up in a piece of leek which will keep them together. There's some fresh tarragon. You can hold it and I'll tie it. Okay. But you tie it up just so that you can lift it out when the chicken is done. And you won't have herbs floating around in the broth. Actually, I'm going to do the same thing with those vegetables. It'd be easier to remove them. And I have a leek here. Take the first layer or two and keep that for stock. That's very good. And we want to open them. Mm. I won't put too much of the green here. Keep the green. We want to cut them in half. And I'm going to wash it because yes, you see there is some dirt down. over there. So I'm going to cut this in half also. Good. And you have the pot for the chicken? I do have a great big pot right here. This is really a very homey recipe, isn't it? Because you yes. don't have to do much to anything. Should we in put the pot? chicken in first? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Listen, this isn't crossed or anything. There doesn't no stuffing. It's just going in sideways. Yes, so that you give me place for all the vegetables here. You don't yeah. have to do this, but it helps to remove the whole thing, you know? Okay, we have that, that next fit to it. Beautifully. It beautifully. And then we have these little pearl onions. And we've just stuck some cloves into them. Yeah. You don't often see a recipe stuck with two cloves. So we and have these are going to go here. in too. And just to keep them from bursting, take your little knife and poke across about a quarter of an inch deep into the root ends of the onions, and that helps keep them together. We have all of it together. I'm putting the salt here, and the bouquet garni, water, and we have some wine, right? Yep, we're gonna have half a bottle of white wine. Half a bottle you're putting? Yes. Well, that's not very much. I think the recipe was half a cup. We get into half a bottle. That wasn't my recipe. Okay. There. And about 10 cups of uh, water. 
Sometimes the chicken come up to the surface and start floating. To keep it underwater, I put a colander or a sieve on top of it. With just the weight will hold it. Is so this we... going to cook with a cover or no? No, I think we'll leave it this way and bring it to a boil and simmer it gently for about 15-20 minutes. Then after it can cool off in the broth. Now that is really a very slow boil or uh -huh. real simmer for 20 minutes. And now... Right. Time for the mushrooms to go in, just a little handful of mushrooms. Good. And then we... it's going to come up to the boil, and then it's going to be covered and sit. Yeah, it come back to a good boil. Yep. We cover it, come back to a strong boil, and now we leave it on the side for 45 minutes to an hour. And you'll be amazed to see that everything is cooked. Good. Now we're going to do the dough for the chicken pot pie. Uh -huh. We want three you cups of want three cups of, of flour, flour, yes. We measure, as always, dip the cup into the flour until it's overflowing. We have two and a half sticks of butter. There we have three cups of flour. Now this butter, this is cold chilled butter cut into little cubes. That's going to mix with the flour very nicely. We have... How much shortening? We want about two tablespoons yeah. of shortening. The reason for the shortening is to tenderize the dough, because we have all-purpose flour. And then have we had the salt in yet? No, I put, uh, you want a little dash of salt, right? About yeah. half a teaspoon, a you want a bit of sugar? Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's it. So, ready? we're gonna pulse it. Now yes. we want a little water that goes yeah. in there. Yes, I put about a third of a cup here. Let's see what happens. Leave a little more. Yeah. You want it you just want to, to hold it. together. Mm. Is that think? holding? Yeah, it's pretty soft. I think it could have about two tablespoons more. Two tablespoons more? Okay. Oh. And this is ice water. Good. And you don't want to do it so much that it's going to sit on top of the blade. And now we take it up and turn it. Into I can take it out this way and just gather it together here. Gather right? it together into a... To a dough, yeah. Can use even the plastic wrap now to gather it. You see, this is holding together very well. That's going to be a, quite a flaky dough because the butter is still in fairly large pieces. Exactly. And now it needs a of, what do you think, about a two-hour rest? Yes. The chicken is done, and now we're going to show you how to serve it. Yes. This is really, it's a really chicken pot au feu. Right. See, so we put that upside it's down. Like this is calendar. nice because yes. it holds it under water. And now we're going to take it out to carve it, right? With all the vegetable. Look at that here. There it is here. And it's good to have that type of board because the juice is going to go yeah. around now. We're going to serve it on a bed of plain steamed rice with a little salt and pepper in it. And you can see that chicken is cooked the way it's separate. You know, just, I pull on it and it's separate this way. I'll put the wing. Julia, I'm going to remove the skin, right? To yes. serve it like that, yes. it's better without so. the skin. Just actually slide the skin off. That really is cooked, isn't it? Yes. Slide very easily. And then we have the two, the breasts like this, you know, are just sliding apart. Okay, here it is. The other breast. Whoop. We're going to rearrange it. I give you the thigh and the drumstick. It certainly smells awfully good. Yes. This is a real home style, you know, Sunday dinner or lunch. Here we are with that last piece. I have my whole chicken. That would be plenty for four people. Huh? Oh, you it think so? would. And there are your vegetables. Now, here is the vegetable. You know what I'm going to do is to put them right on top. Remove oh, oh, the, so the I'll spring, separate them. And we can separate oh. them. You really need two people in the kitchen, don't you? It's much better much with Much better with two. Okay, now I've got the bouquet garni here, which this we don't need. I have the rest of the onion there, the mushroom. Here we are. 
This is a really full platter, nice and hot. Maybe a little piece of parsley in the middle. Yes, and put a little bit of the broth Oh, yes, on. that's a good idea, yes. Well, everyone can have a little cup of broth. Yes, on the side. his or her side. Even some crouton on the side, and certainly yes. very often it's served mm -hmm. with a mustard like this, and some people like the coarse salt. Well, that makes a very homey meal and a very nice informal Sunday lunch. Oh, here's a great chicken soup. We didn't eat all of that chicken and vegetables, so we've turned it into a first-rice chicken soup. And now, another recipe. It's used with the same chicken. with a chicken pot pie. Mm -hmm. And here's some of the stock, and we've reduced it so it'll have a lot of flavor, so we're going to make a chicken velouté sauce, which starts with a butter and flour roux but you must always cook for about two minutes until it boils and bubbles and then you're ready to add the liquid. That would be two tablespoons. Yes. And two tablespoons. Yeah, it should be plenty. Good. And during, while you're doing the roux there, so I'll cut my vegetable this way. I have mushroom. I can leave them whole or cut them. The boiled onion. There is a great deal of vegetable here. Actually, it's probably twice the amount of vegetable for the amount of meat, which is fine. That's going to be a super chicken pot pie, yes. I think. Are you putting the velouté in there? I mean, the well, I haven't uh, finished it yet. Okay. I just wanted to see what you was up to. Well, I was waiting for your sauce to be Well, I can't, I can't do it now. Okay. You want, you me want to, to ladle me? The... Yeah. Ladle me some of that in. Off heat, I'll blend it. A beautiful stock here. The stock has been reduced by at least half, right, to mm -hmm. get some taste. And as always, you want to make more sauce than you think, don't Absolutely, you think? Absolutely, yes. There's never enough. Never enough. Okay. Well, let that simmer while you're finishing. For a couple of minutes. Do you want some cream in there? Well, why not? You have some there. Okay, good. A little cream. And I'll continue cutting my chicken. Be sure to take the bone out. This is the thigh bone. Good. And the rest can be either cut or shredded. You don't want it to cut it too small anyway. Inch pieces. Here we are here. And in that situation, you want to be about half inch from the top of the gratin dish here. Mixing this in there. Do you have some peas for me there? I this do. Would look good. But that's going to cook in the oven for These a while. Frozen peas, but you said that. If there were a certain type, they were okay. Yes, those I, I feel are very good on the market. Those are the tiny, they call it baby peas or tender peas or tiny peas. And when they pick them up, they open the tea pad, they put that into a, a mixture of water and salt. The specific gravity make it so the ones which are high in sugar come to the top and the big one high in starch go to the bottom. So the ones which are picked up this way are nice, tender and small. So they're good. Here we are, that looks pretty good. Well, you might taste this. Yes. I need to. Yeah. I think the consistency is perfect. So shall we put it on top? All right. All right. Are we going to need all of it, yes. Because you want it to be covered. It's just about perfect. You did good there. That's great. This is perfectly good. Just as it is, you could call it chicken a la king. But we're going to make it into a pot pie, so we're going to let it cool off a little bit. Yes, here is our dough. That, and I just need a piece of that dough. This is the dough we made, the pat brise, the nice butter pie crust dough. Okay. I'm going to take about a third of it. I should have enough with this here, because this is not too, too big, right? Let's get it together. You're going to do it into an oval shape. I, I try. I'm, we, I'm going to try. And we have our oven is already preheated to what? About four, 400, 400. Seventy. Yes. We want to keep the dough cold. Matter of fact, I have a piece of marble I got in the graveyard stone making place that fits into my fridge, and that I keep it cold, and that's wonderful for pastry. I think I'm going to put a little bit of wash on. Egg wash. Egg wash. Yes. Yeah. That's a good idea. That'll make it stick, won't it? Yes. 
And maybe the first thing that I'm going to do is to wet the side of my bowl. That's going to make, make, it make stick the pastry a stick. Here. Okay. This is actually quite cold because the chicken was cold. Mm -hmm. It was just the sauce that was hot. If it's too warm, that's going to thin out the pastry. Well, that's nice. I think it's about enough. We'll glue it around here. Yeah, so we just brush this. Okay. So that should be about, we can maybe mark the top a little bit. You, you, know. you have to make a steam hole. I think that probably be a good idea. You know. One here. Another one. Mm -hmm. One here and one there. Mm -hmm. so oven is preheated. Yes, the oven and is And that's done. a good idea. Put it on a cookie sheet or a jelly roll pan so yeah. if it won't boil Thank over you. and hurt anything. Okay, I think that would take a good 35-45 minutes. It depends also whether your chicken is hot or cold. And now with the rest of the dough here, we're going to do an apple tart or apple galette. You wouldn't expect a chicken pot pie dough to turn into a tart, but it's going to, it's isn't it? Fine. So we're going to do a glaze first. And this is a very French beginning to a tart, this apricot glaze. And you just get plain apricot jam. The best possible quality apricot jam will give you the best glaze. Eh? I'm peeling the apple during that time. And I'm laboriously pushing this through a sieve. We're using a golden here. Could you then another type of apple, of course. I think the golden is very important because it may not have the best flavor of all, but it does hold its shape. You're always safe with a golden. Yes. With a Granny Smith, if the Granny Smith is a little bit old, it can come apart. It can sometimes puff up. This is quite a bit of pulp in there. Yes. Well, I can use it. All right. I'll just give it to you. I'm going to put in a little sugar here. Put it about a tablespoon in there. You could, of course, cut your apple in different way. You could slice the apple this way so you can put it like a deck of cards, you know, spreading it That's out nice. like that on top of That would be if we were going to be elegant. Yeah, but we are not elegant today. No. We are functional. <laughs> and in this, I thought we'll put some raisins, although they're actually currant, but currant are small raisins. Maybe a little bit of dry apricot, just coarsely cut in this. Here we are. A bit of cinnamon. Well, maybe a teaspoon or so of cinnamon. That. That'd be the mixture yes. of a... And then uh, a little it bit have of sugar. Some sugar in? Yes, a few, maybe. Two, three tablespoons. You know, there's some people that are so afraid of sugar that they'll serve you cut up fruit with no sugar on it, and then uh -huh. none of the juices have started to go. That's true. So you have that piece left, which is about two thirds of our recipe. Mm, that's been kept nice and, and it's cold. It's a bit hard, yes. So, we're going to roll it right there. So you want to bang the dough a little bit That's like that. That's a wonderful way of doing it, of just banging it like that. Yes. And that spreads it out as you bang it. <laughs> yes. I, lear I learned that in Paris. That get rid of your frustration too. Okay. That's it. So we're going to do a free form type of dough here, extending it a lot. You know, you have to work fast here, especially when it's very hot in your kitchen. That's why it's good it to have one of those uh, marbles in the fridge all the time. Yeah, the marble will can tend to keep that really cold, you know. Here I'm going to pause for a moment and at my glaze. It's now bubbling away, but I want it to boil down to the thread stage, which means until the last drops form a thread from the spoon so it's not quite there. Okay. Well, my dough is about ready now, and we'll roll that directly onto the rolling pin, and I'll put it on a cookie sheet like this. All right, here we are. Well, that's a big tart. Now, this is finally ready, but as you can see, that is threading as it comes off the end of the spoon. But I think you're right, Jack, that we're not going to have enough for the top, so why not put a little bit of just... You want some of that in the bottom? And then we'll have both lumps and clear. It gives an awfully Just nice flavor, I think. Yes, a little bit in the bottom. And I can put my fruit right on top of it. 
to want to spread it out, you know, until almost to the edge. I mean, you want to have about a good inch left of the edge. And very simply, now you bring back that dough on top of it. We're doing a kind of it's receptacle nice being able here. To do free form, because it's so much easier, I think. Yes, and you use all the dough, you don't have anything left over. Yes. You know? Good. Sometimes I put a little bit of sugar here on the side so it, mm -hmm. it browns nicely. And then we need a bit of butter in it, about well, two tablespoons of butter or so. You can always leave out the butter if you feel you must. But it's better with it. Oh, always. And I'm going to put that in the oven, 400 degrees, for like an hour. Mm. Chicken pot pie. Look nice and brown. Now oh, I think it's ready. Beautiful. Yes. So, whoop. This is a nice dish to bring that to the table. You know? That right. looks beautiful. Mm. This one serves the... six people, don't you think? Oh, yeah, it's easy, yes. Yeah? What do you think? Oh, that looks lovely. Look at that. There's all that nice sauce. Mm. Mm. Oh, it yeah, smells beautiful. I'm testing in the big dish and you're testing in the plate, right? I'm just going to, I want to see how that... It's hot. Oh. <laughs> well. But good. That's a very good pie crust. Yeah, it does. Isn't it? Mm, it does, very good. And that's then good. now we move on to the big tart, right? Well, that's beautiful. You want to bring your glaze? You want to put a few drops of... Go on, man, yeah, yeah. Is that okay? And it a finish, finish look, you know, when you, you can even brush a little bit of it mm, on the, that's, that's nice. on the crust, you know. Mm -hmm. And I like to, to put that with the, with the spoon, like if you mm. are glazing it this that way. That makes all the difference if you don't have to glaze it. It's not as jolly. It's not quite as nice, yes. Yes, this is lovely. That looks very nice. Yes, and it's easy to serve, you know, for a big party. Mm -hmm. You do those big tarts like this, and they are nice to cut like into wedge, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It works out pretty good, you know. Here it is. That looks pretty good. You think we should have some whipped cream with oh, that? Yes, we might have some whipped cream. I'm going to put a little bit here. I want to give it a little bit of a finishing touch with a spring of mint, maybe. Mm -hmm. on top here. That's very nice because it goes with a plate, too. Yes. And we should try it. Now we should try it. We don't want to show it to anyone if we don't really think no. it's delicious. I always want to try on the side of the dough. And you mm -hmm. can see here the flakiness of that dough. I mean, it's falling almost like a puff pastry. Mmm, that is good, Jack. I think, I think the dough is excellent. I think we did well. Mm -hmm, I think so. I think yes. we deserve a little glass of wine. And I think we deserve some wine. I think wine, we do. Right? Well, we hope you're going to do it for your friend. Oh, you'll love it. And cook together. Bon appétit. And happy cooking. For more information about Julia and Jacques, visit us at a la carte TV .com. Julia Child and Jacques Pepin, one of television's most beloved duos, have created this award-winning cookbook. Julia and Jacques' Cooking at Home, containing more than 400 pages of recipes and 328 full-color pictures. To order, call 1-800-798-2433. Also available, the complete 22-episode series, 11 Hours of Julia and Jacques on DVD, $29.95. Major funding is provided by... In this bottle of Behringer, a 125-year commitment to making great wine. From the only winery ever to win Wine of the Year for both a Cabernet and a Chardonnay. In this glass, the perfect complement to your own special moments. Whatever they happen to be. Behringer. All we are in every bottle. By OXO Good Grips. From kitchen to cleaning to gardening. OXO. Makers of innovative products that make everyday living easier. OXO. Tools you hold on to.
by Land O'Lakes. Where simple goodness begins. Allclad is bonded construction. Allclad is innovative design. Allclad is professional equipment. Allclad is a state of mind. We at Allclad are honored to be in the kitchen with two of the world's most celebrated chefs, Julia Child and Jacques Pepin. Presentation of KQED San Francisco.